Good morning. Um, so I'm going just to say a few words. Uh, just to, we have uh, many years ago uh, discussions with Alain Dehoff from OEA, and he was presenting the OEA Terrestrial Code and this big Bible with so many chapters and things. So we really saw that it would be a good idea to make it more digestible for people to understand many of the aspects of this code, and this is how this started and was developed in collaboration with the OEA. So I will let uh, um, Gregorio, because the content of the modules is from the OEA, we were really supporting the process. Uh, and um, and uh, so I think that what is important also to know is that the modules are available uh, in, uh, and via a link uh, in the internet, and also they are uh, available offline. So if you ever need them to, to train other people, you can also use them offline, and, and the links and everything is in the presentation. So I let Gregorio take over. <coughs> Thanks, Valentina. Good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, I'm sure after my presentation yesterday, you were all very excited about learning more about standards and you realize that sometimes are not straightforward. You might need to have a little bit of second reading to understand the, the implication and the implementation. So as Valentina mentioned, it was a, a nice initiative to try to make this international standard more user friendly. So we established this nice collaboration with uh, Fundación Merio which uh, I think was quite fruitful. So the idea was to have these two books that I presented yesterday very quickly and briefly, which looks like uh, that, that one in the middle, um, which is, is regulation. It's like any country regulation. So a little bit dry, not always uh, the message might not be always clear. You need to be trained to understand laws and regulations. So that's the same applies to international standard. And when it comes to rabies, there was a combination of different, different standards, as we mentioned yesterday. Some of them, they are very much dedicated to rabies. Some others are a little bit more horizontal, but influence very much rabies, like chapter 7.7 .7 on animal uh, dogs population control. Um, so the idea was to try to combine all these standards in three nice modules but in a, in a way that uh, will be much easier to understand and at least much more attractive to go through. So with thanks to the IT people in Fundación Merrio, we just basically digest the international standard for the end user. And we get, came out with these three modules, which the first module will be everything related to notification. We extensively discussed yesterday, and also this is control. The second module would be very much dedicated to diagnostics and vaccines, which also touch on vaccine bank. And the third module, which uh, followed this morning's speaker, was stray dogs population control. One of the advantages of the modules is that they are, of course, online. I will provide the, the link, and it's through the OIE and Fundación Merio website. You can get access to it but you can also have offline. And I believe all of you got the modules in your USB key. If not, just check with us and, and we will be happy to, to provide. As mentioned, user-friendly, that was the main target to try to make attractive for user to, to, to go through. We include uh, case studies because uh, nothing better than a good example to understand what we mean with each of the article. We all now used to, to go with, through e-learning, and we know sometimes can be a bit tedious, so we include question, we embedded question, which just basically draw the attention of the, of the participant, of the student, to, to highlight some key points that they are important to, to fully understand the, the standard. And of course, like any other training material, at the end, we want to check that the, the knowledge actually went through, so through uh, an assessment. So this is the module how it looks like. I was not brave enough to bring uh, a live example. We'll try to do later. So I better, I thought better to do like a short screen for the, for the module for you to, to have a look how it looks like. And um, this is the, for module one, and the first uh, part of the e-learning, of course, establish the learning objective and also the duration. So the module on average is around one hour. So in three hours, you can go through the, all the international standard related to, to rabies. 
So reading out the, the objective, uh, learning objective of module one. So the student, the participants of the person who goes through should at the end of the module should understand what is the OIE, which I think that we all know. So we, that would be quite simple. It's also the, the purpose and procedure for setting the OI international standard. What's the, the standard setting process that we, we went through yesterday. The requirements for the notification of Revis cases, again, we discussed yesterday. Essential components of a Revis control program in DOCS. The student should know the differentiate between what is a self-declaration and official recognition for disease freedom of a country of some. And of course, recommendation for safe importation of safe animal movement when it comes to, to rabies. If we, mo if we move to module two, which is uh, dedicated to diagnostics and vaccines, again, will be a, a module with, uh, will be around one hour to go through. And the objective will be to understand what are the appropriate diagnostic techniques on rabies. How important is the high quality vaccine using parenteral vaccine for dogs. Again, the, the module were based on the 2016 uh, version of the terrestrial code. That means if we are modifying the, the international standard, the module, we, we, we will need to work together again to, uh, to update, to include, for instance, this oral vaccination when it's come to, to here. And also we talk about the OI vaccine bank as a tool to procure high quality vaccine for those countries that they actually need it. When we move to module three, which is stray dogs population control, this module is a bit shorter. It's uh, around 40 minutes. Um, the learning objective is to better understand the objective of stray dogs population control program as an integrated part of rabies control programs. The student will understand the responsibilities and competences of uh, uh, the, all the parties involved in, in dogs population control will understand the role of the advisory group, the development of dogs population control program. They will understand also the measure implemented to control stray dogs population, the monitoring and evaluation of dogs population control. At the very end of the module, there was some, some, some section dedicated to the estimation of the site's population. I might say that the, the target, the module were targeting official veterinarians. Although everybody, of course, is very welcome to to be part of the module, to, to go through the modules, we were actually thinking on that colleagues that they are actually responsible for the implementation of the standards. And this is an example of a case study that I will ask you to go through <coughs> to see if you, if you did read the, the standard yesterday. Um, apparently the, the talk has been recorded, so your answer will be recorded as well, so you better <laughs> Be sure you got the right answer. So this is an example of a case study, which is very practical. So the case study say that the last case of dogs rabies in one country was back in 2001. In April 2013, a dog was illegally introduced for an endemic country. And I think we all can put in our minds a real a scenario. I'm hearing some, some answer from here, that's good. <laughs> X country could be any country, which is. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, in June 2013, these illegally introduced dogs, unfortunately, bite uh, a child. Medical authorities report the incident to the veterinary authorities, so there was a good uh, integrated case management. And the dogs was placed in quarantine. The dogs had not previous history of vaccination against rabies, I must say, and there was not any other victims of animal or humans were reported. So we got one this a scenario where there was only one bite and the, the health services act quite quickly. Unfortunately, the dogs developed clinical signs and was put down on the 30th of June in 2013. It was sent to, to the lab and test positive for rabies. And this is a real case. So the questions are very straightforward. Uh, so based on the case definition we discussed yesterday, do you think it's a rabies case? Yeah, good. So we need to, within 24 hours, we will report to, to the UI, isn't it? Uh, so it will be important for, when it's come to recovery of freedom, it will be very important to understand what kind of case it is. 
and did, we did not mention yesterday, but there is two type of cases, imported cases or indigenous case. So which kind of case do you think it is? It's imported, isn't it? So your country is free, you import, so it's an imported case. So now we move to the dates. August 2013, the veterinary services called the OIE and said, I would like to recover my free status. Can, can I do it? So you can do it, but can you do it in August 2013? That's mean the, the incidents happened on the third, 20, uh, let's say 20, 30th of June. So you got June, July, August, two months. Can you recover free status within two months? Well, so, some of you might need to go back to the standards, but the answer is no. <laughs> okay, and now we give you the we'll give you the response. So that could be very appropriate in your way back to your country to go through this, at least this module to get this very clear. Because again, the implication of being free of rabies, it's important because that will <laughs> depend on how you are going to move your animal from one country to another. And that's got health implication, of, of course, economic implication. So the answer to question three is no, in August, your country is still free, uh, sorry, is still infected. If we move to point four, provide that there are not more cases identified, so we did what we're supposed to do, we trace back and forward, we did the epidemiological investigation, and we can confirm that it was just one case off, that's it. So when do you think the country will recover its status according to the current uh, terrestrial code? Six months, one year, two years? Two years? It's an indigenous case. Six months I'm hearing here, which that, that is important. So it's six, six months after, after you got the, the outbreak. So that, this is the current text. And I'm very glad you are feeling a bit uncomfortable with this because the new terrestrial code, that has been reassessed. And the expert consider that if you really investigate and you can demonstrate that there was not more cases, an indigenous case will not lead to lose the status. But that will be the new terrestrial code if go adopted. The current regulation, which applies to worldwide, is that if you got imported case, it's happened to the state. Let's try to give a, a name now. There was a, a case imported, and there was a, it was not in the quarantine. They were out of the airport, identified, and the country lose the status for six months. It's happened very often to France. Uh, Herbe, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. The, there is imported case, imported animals illegally. Outbreak, the country lose the status. So every single person that want to move animals, pet from that country to another country will need to do as infected countries for at least six months. So that got implication and this is how the international standard work. So that is a kind of an example of a case study there is a, in each of the three modules, we got two or three case studies that they really put you in reality. So you read the text and then you understand the implication in each of the lines. Because I might say that every single word in the terrestrial code and terrestrial manual, they got a meaning. So you really need to understand every single word to make sure the implementation of the, of the, of the regulation are appropriate. At the end of the module, we got an assessment and now, again, I will kindly ask you to go through this uh, question, which is uh, question five of, uh, thir out of 13 questions, which correspond to module three, which is on stray dogs population. And the question is, what are the responsibilities of private sector in the control and management of dogs population? <coughs> and then the student need to go through the answer and need to select what are the appropriate. So we'll ask, kindly ask you if you tell me if it's yes or no. So you think the responsibility of the private sector is to respond and report suspected notifiable diseases? Yes. yes, that's good. Somebody in the back, they were quite brave to see loud. Thanks, Terence. <laughs> Involvement of in dogs health programs, including vaccination. Do you think the private sector is involved? You can say yes. Advice. Dogs handler consulting the veterinarians for treatment of a dog. The answer might be yes. And liaise with the, the police and or local authorities to deal with cases of neglect, reducing problems associated with stray and mismanaged dogs. Yes, so all applies. So this is actually text that come out 
out of the international standard, but I, I believe put in a more nice way. So the modules links are here. So this is the three links. <coughs> and then I'm going to, as we mentioned, can be offline. And I will try to go live, which I'm always very scared to, to do it. I must say that there was a little bit discussion between my colleague Valentina and me say, well, we need to be careful because always the live syndrome, eh? when you want to put in live, uh, it doesn't work. Eh? But Cindy is uh, IT, perfect, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. So that's uh, how it looks like. You are clicking the access, you got the contents. Well, it doesn't look completely correct, but anyway, that will, will work. So you got uh, a little bit of uh, outline of the module learning objective, the, the screenshot I, I showed you previously. Disclaimer, just try to explain that this is actually not the international standard, are based on the international standard, so that's not a legal text to be used, just for learning purposes. It gives you the, the, the source of information, what are the international standard that we are, are discussing. And then we start with the module. So for instance here, key terminology, we were discussing yesterday, monitoring surveillance, we were discussing terminology. So what is current capacity? So you got here and the kind of, I don't know if you can see that properly, but anyway. So you, when you click, they give you the, the, the answer, this kind of embed question. So the students are engaged in the, in the module. You got the uh, italic that I mentioned yesterday, that means this particular term has been defined according for the purpose of the terrestrial code. We were discussing with the stray dogs. I believe if you bring 20 experts to a table or to the same room, there will be 20 different definitions of stray dogs. So the international standard, what we try to do is to agree. I, and this is the, the, this is the glossary of the, of the UI. So you clink into the into the italics, animal welfare, what is animal welfare? Again, send you to the, send you to the glossary of the terrestrial code, and for the purpose of the terrestrial code, in agreement with expert and in agreement with the 181 member countries, when it's come to re international regulation, animal welfare means this. So there is no any argument we might agree or disagree. If we disagree, this could be open for discussion in the future. But uh, for the time being, this is the, the discussion. Um, and that's it, my last slide. It's quite clear that good understanding of international standard results in national regulation and enforcement. We need to understand the rules to be able to enforce the rule. Education at all level, general public, central local authority should be part of rabies elimination strategy. Last week, we. We went to a, a meeting in the, in the southern part of Africa, and the participant, our colleague, clearly say it's the, the law is not enforced because it's not well understood at local level. At central level, we understand what is the need to vaccinate and the need to register dogs, but when you go to the local authorities, the meaning of the law is not well understood, therefore it's not well enforced, it's not well implemented. So there is a clear need to train our people on the law to be able to, to enforce. And of course, education program, it, go, it goes without saying in this session, it's quite clear, should be adapted to the audience to make use of new technologies. We got uh, f uh, all possibilities out there to make use of these new technologies to, to, to really reach the target audience. And with that, I thank you for your attention.